Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we're going to start off this with a quick flight towards the coast at the, the Kerbal Space Center. Now, of course, we know where the coast is, it's straight off the end of the runway, and if you uh, overshoot just by just a little, you will pretty much find yourself in the water and usually destroyed. Well, not anymore. Four times time acceleration, you have to fly along for a few minutes before you get anywhere near the, uh, near the coast. In fact, uh, you can see the clock up there, we've just passed one minute on it, and uh, we're still not there. We're coming down nice and low, look at that shadow there, eh? Yeah, 1 minute 52, 55, 4. yeah, and uh, well, it's hard to tell exactly because the sea does seem to be a little glitchy. What is going on here? Well, what is going on is obviously the Kerbal Rescaled Universe mod. Um, basically, there's a bunch of people who think that Kerbal Space Program is not as realistic as they'd like. And uh, they're doing a marvellous job of recreating or improving or adjusting, let's say. It depends upon how you uh, view this. <laughs> but Nathan Kell is, is the one he's dealing with a bunch of different mods right now. He has created the Universe Resize mod. And uh, first of all, they've taken the moon and they've given it some inclination with respect to the planet Kerb. And they've put it out at the same distance as the Earth's moon. Uh, Minmus they've kept the same size but they've put it into a weird orbit which makes it look like a captured asteroid supposedly although I might argue the exact capture dynamics and of course because they put Kerb in the same distance from the Sun as it would be on in our solar system it means it's further out than any of the other planets uh, this of course will mean that all your uh, solar cell systems will probably not work particularly well but uh, regardless we're really just concentrating on Kerbin right now. This is the first release of uh, his uh, rescaled solar system, and there's a, a bunch of uh, glitches here and there. The it, it looks really... It has some issues, let's say. I mean, one of the other things is because all the distances on the planet have been rescaled by a factor of 10, the altitudes have been kept more or less the same. And this more or less has had the effect of making the... Like the mountains, Mount K2 is no longer this spire shooting off into the sky. It's kind of this suggestion of a hill there with a plateau on top. Uh, it still took me like 10 minutes to fly out there, even using a cheated uh, aircraft with uh, rockets in it and uh, infinite fuel. Had to skip out of the atmosphere and come back in so I could get down and take a look at this uh, magnificent... Well, I actually know it's a kind of a lame replacement for what was once a magnificent icon of the planet Kerbin. Um, yeah, I mean, if you've played Orbiter and you've seen the default terrain on the planet Earth, then this looks kind of familiar, honestly. The, the default terrain in Orbiter is really mushy and doesn't really have the level of detail that Kerbin has, but... Uh, this is what happens when you scale terrain up. It gets big and all the details get washed out and your sharp-sided cliffs become gradual slopes. So anyway, uh, they recommend using this with a bunch of other mods. Specifically, Ferrum Aerospace is very important. This is an otherwise stock rocket which uh, we're going to take into, ro into space while I talk about the the planet as it is. So the planet has been rescaled to be about 6,400 kilometers in radius. That means that the rockets that you're going to have to fly are going to need about 8 kilometers per second delta V. You really, really, really want Ferrum Aerospace because it means that the atmosphere is far less soupy early on. And pretty much, you know, when you talk about the gravity turn, you're going to start your gravity turn right away. If you uh, wait too long, you're just going to waste fuel and uh, go higher up than you should. But of course, even turning right away, it takes us a very long time to get out over the coast. So yeah, this is a three-stage rocket with uh, boosters helping it during the first stage. And um, yeah, they suggest, or Nathan suggests you also use the modular fuels uh, mod, which of course he is now maintaining because uh, you know the original maintainer has has uh, disappeared from the scene. I guess um, I tried using it and I had some problems, so I'm not including it. I figured I'd just try and build a regular rocket that actually looked like a sane rocket. I didn't want to build something that looked, you know, that was asparagus to hell because that's easy. I wanted to build something that looked like a, a regular multi-stage rocket you might find 
launched by, you know, NASA or one of those other space agencies. So uh, this is what I came up with. That is a mainsail pushing this first stage and we're about to ditch it, uh, having got up to 1.3 kilometers per, per second. Now we have five little engines on this next stage here, all fueled off of that uh, double tank there. That's a, that would be a single orange tank, but I wanted to put two. Uh, I wanted to split it into two because of the usual overheating issues. Speaking of overheating, he is also uh, working on the deadly re-entry mod, which of course adds a level of realism and more explosions, which we like. Uh, deadly re-entry, as you uh, may or may not know, it, it allows uh, the heating effect to actually cause damage to your spacecraft and incorporates things like heat shields and other paraphernalia to make sure that you can actually uh, get through the atmosphere safely. Although I'd point out that right now, um, you get the heat shields at the very first tech level, which basically kind of spoils the first tech level because they also act as decouplers. <laughs> anyway, at this point, we've passed three and a half kilometers per second. This would usually be escape velocity from the Kerbin system, but now it is merely suborbital. Now, if you follow the developer's suggestions, uh, there's a bunch of mods that you should add, and uh, this will actually bring your rockets more in line with real rockets. It will actually make it a little easier. In fact, if you're working with default uh, specific impulses, tank masses, and everything like that, Kerbal rockets actually underperform compared to the real thing. And of course, you need to do that because the planet Kerbin is 10 times smaller. And of course, the converse of this is that if uh, you want to get something out to the moon, you're going to really need those mods. The, <laughs> you know, the, I don't think it's easy to build a rocket that is large enough to get this uh, capsule out to land on the moon and bring it back. Uh, you probably have to build something about the size of Saturn V, one might imagine. <laughs> Anyway, we're on to our final stage, 5.7 kilometers per second. Obviously, we're aiming for about 7.2 being our, our final uh, orbit. And uh, our final altitude will be about 300 kilometers as well. Um, the atmosphere, of course, disappears uh, above about 100 kilometers per second. They rescaled the planet. They didn't really rescale the atmosphere nearly as much. There might be some scaling changes, but I'm not really an expert with Ferrum to actually check that or not. I didn't I didn't check, right? I'm sure that if they did it, they would have mentioned it. Um, you'll notice also I mentioned that the moon is on this uh, quite high inclination orbit and a lot of people don't think of the moon as having quite such a high inclination orbit, but you know, it does have an inclination with respect to the Earth and the Sun. The ecliptic basically is the plane formed by the Earth moving around the Sun. And so the moon has a, an inclination of respect to that. But on top of that, the developers are adding in the inclination due to the um, due to the inclination of the poles, right? You know, our, our, uh, the axial tilt of the Earth is about 23 degrees. And uh, apparently they couldn't figure out how to make that, into, couldn't give curb in that, they couldn't figure out how. And I would really like somebody to do that because honestly, I'm getting bored of launching from the equator on a planet that has no axial tilt. I mean, come on, we... I, I want some more difficulty, right? <laughs> yes, I want the Kerbal Space Program to be harder. Uh, so yeah, the, the inclination for the moon is more or less supposed to be representative of the average inclination because, of course, it changes over time with uh, various cycles and perturbations and things like that. Minmus, they've stuck in this high inclination orbit that's supposed to be captured, but, uh, um, well, uh, I, I'm not sure. I'd, I'd have to see if the, what kind of capture would produce something in that orbit. It does pass very close to the moon's sphere of influence. I'm not sure how big that would be. Uh, I'm going to have to actually go out there, which would require actually downloading all these other mods. Modular fuels had a big problem with i i installed it and i installed the the realistic config and it just came up with garbage and kept on giving me stupid fuel tanks so i gave up so there we go it's a 120 or whatever meters per second to more or less get ourselves into our final orbit that is a quite an efficient launch i would say especially since i'm more or less judging it by hand no pre-computing or anything and plenty of fuel left uh, so, uh, you know, feel free to try this at home. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite proud of how well this, this was pulled off. Of course, Jebediah was the one really bringing the, bringing the goodness here. 
So there are other uh, mods to try and uh, add realism. There's a couple of different life support mods. There's a uh, tack life support and there's ion cross life support. And uh, I'm not sure which one is the best supported at this time or which one has the best features, but you should take a look at both of those and decide. Uh, there's the Kerbal ISP difficulty scaler, which basically pops up a window and lets you you know, more or less slide, use a slider to adjust how easy or how hard your rockets should be. Uh, there's realistic and there's uh, much, much harder. <laughs> and it also adjusts the, the thrust of the rockets with altitude instead of in adjusting the efficiency, which... Uh, is really what happens. This is this is something the Kerbal Space Program still hasn't fixed, uh, despite me complaining many, many times. When you launch your um, specific impulse changes with altitude, and while that is true for a real rocket, what's really happening is your thrust is changing with altitude because uh, your rocket uh, gas, your exhaust, is expanding out into an atmosphere which is, of course, pushing back in against it. And that actually has the effect, more or less, of reducing the efficiency. But look at this. This is marvellous. We're in orbit. You can... It, it, it's a 90-minute orbit it takes, and it looks great from this altitude, especially if you install one of the texture mods that gives you a uh, better-looking atmosphere. I'm going to come back, do it a uh, Russian style. We're going to land over land, so to speak. Um... So we're just going to bring it down to about 30 kilometers. This will be a ballistic re-entry. I would like to see how high my uh, G's get. I don't want them to go too high. The the old, uh, the old original capsules that the Russians used, the Vostok capsules, they would do like 9 G's on descent. And uh, Soyuz will, uh, will experience about 9 G's if they uh, have a problem because... The ball is ballistically stable, but the ballistic trajectory will bring it back down into the atmosphere too fast and it will uh, experience about 9 Gs. But by using the shape of the capsule as a essentially a lifting body, you can slow the descent of these capsules and keep the deceleration around 3 G. I mean... I mean, you occasionally hear about the odd, uh, you know, prop Soyuz capsules where uh, the, the crew experience 9G and it's, oh, it's so terrible. But that's nothing compared to Soyuz 5. Now, Soyuz 5 was launched in uh, 1969 and its goal was to dock with Soyuz 4. Uh, they, it was actually, you know, the first time two manned spacecraft had docked in orbit. And what happened was Soyuz 5 basically went up and they... they uh, they docked with the, the other spacecraft and transferred two crew over, right? Because they wanted to bring them down on a different spacecraft to show how awesome they were. But uh, the then Soyuz 5 was to return with just the pilot, right? That would be Boris Volnyov. And he had quite possibly the worst re-entry experience uh, in history, I think. I mean, other than people that have died, okay. Uh, <laughs> basically, after the retro burn, the a service module of the Soyuz, which was used for in-orbit maneuvering, that failed to jettison. And that meant that he was kind of heading into the atmosphere. They couldn't do anything about it at that stage. They couldn't get out and, like, whack it with a hammer or whatever to knock it off. No. So uh, the aerodynamics, then, of the capsule are all screwed up, and it's basically falling into the atmosphere. And because of the extra weight, it was flipped around head first. So he's re-entering head first. And, of course, there's some problems with this, right? The deceleration is pushing him forwards in his seat and he's being pushed against the har harnesses, right? Instead of getting pulled down into the padded seat. Uh, and then, of course, you have that whole problem of the uh, ram pressure and the heating. The heating being applied to the front of the capsule was starting to uh, heat up the hatch and the gaskets that sealed the hatch, the rubber gaskets, they uh, started to burn. So, uh, first of all, the capsule starts to get full of smoke, and he's probably at this point thinking that everything's gonna. <laughs> he's probably thinking this is gonna be his last landing. But no, uh, it the the forces were enough that the um, service module broke off, and the capsule flips around, which uh, was probably not the most comfortable thing ever. But at the same time, he was probably quite happy to finally have the heat shield facing into the stream of air. So. Uh, at that point, he's, like, probably quite happy. But then during descent, uh, of course, he's way off target because the uh, 
because the the extra mass has has pushed him off in the wrong direction and uh if, but maybe he's flying further east over russia more or less into siberia i guess down in, into the urals i think but uh as he's coming down uh, they have a parachute problem and the parachute cables get entangled and he's more or less coming down more slowly or sorry more rapidly than he should but uh, of course they still have those uh, landing rockets which fire just before landing to cushion the, the landing nope those didn't fire either so he hits the ground so hard breaks all his teeth <laughs> and uh, he then uh, is realizing that he's you know hundreds and hundreds of miles off target nobody knows where he is and uh, outside it's a snow field and it's 38 degrees below zero and uh, when I say 38 degrees it doesn't really matter if it's centigrade or Fahrenheit because they're both roughly the same it's cold uh, I guess it should take some comfort from the fact they would have had a standard survival kit, including a shotgun to deal with polar bears. But uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, figuring it would take a while for uh, any rescuers to come to him, he more or less gets out of the capsule and walks until he finds somebody's house and then no doubt tells some crazy stories uh, about flying in space or something while sitting around a fire with vodka because he is awesome. He is Jebediah embodied. Well, but well, Jebediah does not seem to be having nearly as many problems, but no doubt he would continue to smile just because he was flying. The only thing that seems to phase Jebediah is exploding things, especially things that are exploding and attached to his spacecraft. Uh, but otherwise, he appears to be appreciating the wonder of his uh, plummet through the atmosphere at uh, roughly 60% of the speed of sound. Once we slow down a little, I shall open the chute. But... Before then, let's uh, start talking about where I'm going with Kerbal Space Program. Uh, having a flown Eva bust, uh, I want to do another series, and the series will be KSP Interstellar. We are going to be going to the stars, the quest for warp drive. It's going to be exploring the tech tree. I'm going to use the modified tech tree, which adds the... Um, adds the kit, the warp drive parts towards the end. I'm trying to see if I can integrate it with the the near future propulsion system so I can have things like Vasimir as well. The main problem I'm running into is that all the mods I want to use now use too much memory, so I don't just have to install mods like B9, I also have to install their alternate texture packs which take a lot less memory. Kerbal Space Program, as you may or may not know, is still a 32-bit process because Unity 64-bit has a lot of random bugs which uh, they can't be bothered to track down. I, I'm not saying... I'm saying they. I'm saying that there's. it's more important to get Kerbal Space Program released than to track down these problems. And I have no doubt that at some point we will see a 64-bit version, but I am not holding my breath for it. I would rather they continue to improve the basic game and then figure out how to port it. Regardless, uh, the, the despite having 16 gigs of memory, uh, I still have this 4 gig process memory problem, and that means it's hard work finding all the things that I want to actually include in my pack. So I'm looking at KW Rocketry because it has the large parts. I'm looking at uh, KSP Interstellar, B9, Kithane, uh, and maybe some other bits and pieces, and I'm going to fly it with Ferrum Aerospace as default. But uh, we are about to reach the surface. Jebediah has flown this giant rocket into space and almost into the ground. Yes, apparently we have landed in a swamp. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if I can roll it up. No, apparently not. Apparently the ground is a few millimeters below this. Um, I guess maybe the ground is usually off by one tenth of this, and by scaling up the planet, we see this difference. Let's uh, get out. Look, <laughs> he's like up to his neck. <laughs> it appears we have landed in a swamp. Yes, this is Jebediah Kerman exploring the depths of Kerbal Swamps. The mod is the uh, the real solar system mod by Nathan Kell. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.